And our word of the day on this Friday of the 12th week in Ordinary Time, this Friday, June the 30th, our word for today is cleansed. Cleansed is our word for today. Our reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God, I am God, the Almighty. Walk in my presence and be blameless. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, that you must keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. God further said to Abraham, As for your wife Sarai, do not call her Sarai. Her name is now Sarah. I will bless her, and I will give you a son by her. Him also will I bless. He shall give rise to nations, and rulers of peoples shall issue from him. Abraham prostrated himself and laughed as he said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Or can Sarah give birth at ninety? Then Abraham said to God, Let but Ishmael live on by your favor. God replied, Nevertheless, your wife Sarah is to bear a son, and you shall call him Isaac. I will maintain my covenant with him as an everlasting pact to be his God and the God of his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I am heeding you. I hereby bless him. I will make him fertile and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of twelve chieftains, and I will make of him a great nation. But my covenant I will maintain with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with him, God departed from Abraham. Our responsorial psalm, Psalm 128, See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, Alleluia. Our Holy Gospel is from Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 4. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. And our word for today, cleansed. Cleansed our word for today. These are our Holy Father's thoughts actually regarding Abraham. General audience, June uh, 2020. So speaking of our first Reading today, Abraham is thus the man of the word. When God speaks, man becomes the receptor of that word in his life, the place in which it seeks to become flesh. This is a great novelty in man's religious journey. The life of a believer begins to be understood as a vocation, thus as a calling, as the place where a promise is fulfilled, and he moves in the world not so much under the weight of an, of an enigma, but with the power of that promise, which one day will be fulfilled. And Abraham believed God's promise. He believed and he set out without knowing where he was going, thus the letter to the Hebrews. But he had trust. Let us not be afraid to argue with God. I will even say something that may seem like heresy. (laughs) Many times I have heard people say to me, you know, this happened to me and I became very angry with God. You had the courage to be angry at God. Yes, I got angry. But this is a form of prayer because only a son or daughter is capable of being angry at their dad and then encounter him again. With God, let us learn to speak like a child with his dad. Because only a son or daughter is capable of being angry at their dad and then encounter him again. With God, let us learn to speak like a child with their father, with their dad. Wow, how beautiful is that? Mm -hmm cleansed our word for today, our Holy Father's thoughts regarding today's first reading from the book of Genesis, speaking about Abraham in particular. Again, set the table. Abraham is 
a hundred years old. Sarah is 90. And so the Lord says to him, he's told him that he's going to make a great nation of him many, many, many years before. And here they are at 190. And Abraham's finally saying, just make a good, just make a great nation out of Ishmael. You know, obviously, both Sarah, Sarai at that point, and God changes her name to Sarah during this encounter. Um, we're both too old. So forget that whole thing. So obviously we got that wrong. Sarai got it right and told me to sleep with the slave woman and she became pregnant. So obviously this promise is to be fulfilled in Ishmael. And the Lord says, oh, no, 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 no. I have a different plan. You and Sarah are going to bear a child. And Abraham laughs. Of course he laughed. He's 100 years old. Sarah is 90. And yet Isaac is born. Isaac, which means laughter, by the way. I have a child uh, mm -hmm. whose name is Isaac because when his mother told me that we were pregnant, we, I laughed. And so I said, well, that's it. That, that's fabulous. So Isaac is his name. Isaac is his name. Oh, but here's the thing. Um, you could see why he laughed. 100 years old and Sarah, his wife, is 90, and yet the promise was not going to be unkept. It was going to be kept. It was going to be fulfilled, and it was fulfilled because when God makes a promise, he always keeps that promise, but his timing doesn't always work according to the way we want it to, and quite frankly, the way that the promise is fulfilled doesn't always work out the way we assume it's going to. In fact, it seldom does, and yet God did it. Through this one child, through this child of the promise, Isaac, he raised up this great faith, this great number of people, so many that it is as numerous as the sand on the shore of the sea. He kept his promise. And what was that promise? The ultimate promise, that ultimate word spoken? Jesus. He spoke that word Jesus, and Jesus came into being. And in Jesus, all of those promises are fulfilled. And we have that opportunity to be cleansed, as we see uh, in the story with the leper today, from Matthew chapter 8. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him, and then a leper approached him, did him, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Brothers and sisters, there are so many things that we go to the Lord for regarding our lives in this world. And sometimes the answer to those things is yes, and sometimes the answer to those things is no. It's always the perfect answer, never imperfect on God's part, always absolutely perfect because he knows every single situation from start to finish and he knows what's in our best interest. But there is one answer that is yes and always yes, and that is, Lord, will you make me clean? And the Lord always says back to us, yes, be made clean. I have made a provision for you that you might always be made clean. I have made provision for you so that there is no sin that my grace is not sufficient to cover. Simply come to me through the sacrament of confession. Be willing to lay that sin there. Lay it in front of the priest who's acting in persona Christi in my name, and I will grant you forgiveness if you repent of that thing and commit not to do it again. Yes, you are made clean. Lord, will you make me clean? Yes, be made clean. And in that confessional, the exact same thing happens. We are cleansed immediately. Immediately, we are cleansed. And so, brothers and sisters, if there's a burden that you are carrying around with you today, if there is something on your heart or mind, some guilt, some sin, take it to the Lord today. If you're a Catholic, by all means, run to the confessional. If you're not Catholic, run to the local Catholic church and join up. But in the meantime, confess that sin uh, to Jesus Christ and know that his grace is sufficient to overcome it all. But my goodness, if you are a Catholic, run to the confessional and receive that forgiveness of your sins through the hand and through the mouth, through the spoken words of the priest, speaking not on behalf of Jesus, 
but in the person of Jesus, Mm -hmm. acting in persona Christi, granting you forgiveness for that sins, acting in the person of Jesus. It is Jesus who forgives as that that priest speaks those words. Receive that forgiveness today and be cleansed. Mm -hmm. Cleansed our word for today. 